Hey, buddy, Crow back again, and I got something in the mail. Actually, this came last week, but only now I'm having an opportunity to uh, get into this. This is the uh, Ar the At Games Arcade Control Panel for Legends Pinball. Uh, this thing right over here, we're going to replace this part here with what is in this box. This isn't going to be like a step-by-step -step thing or anything. I'm just kind of planning on kind of unboxing this thing. And, um, you know, I'm not going to be having the camera running while I'm installing it, but I might, you know, stop and take a quick shot of, you know, the steps after I've done them. Uh, but what let's do right now, and again, there'll be timestamps and everything. And if you do happen to like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. But I'm going to put this on a tripod and uh, we will uh, open this box up, even though I kind of did open it a little bit already. <laughs> All right, we've got it here. We've got it a little bit opened and... Uh, open it up here. I think this was actually underneath this cardboard, but I put it back on top for several, whatever reason. But this is the instruction manual and how to, what you need to do, uh, the tools you need, just a Phillips head screwdriver, not included. Yeah, they're not going to give you a screwdriver. You got to provide that yourself. Uh, but the, oh, you know, I totally forgot to mention how much I paid for this. Normally, this is on uh, the At Games website for $200. And I thought that I didn't want to pay $200 for that, but I thought that maybe on the next National Owner's Day, uh, which actually happened over Labor Day weekend, which was the last National Owner's Day uh, sale, uh, this was half price. So I paid $100 for this, and I was like, yeah, $100 I'm going to go for. It. That's what I was kind of hoping for, because I definitely didn't want to pay $200 for this, especially on something that I was primarily using for pinball. But now I can... Uh, easily have some other options there but yeah <laughs> okay so we got our oh man i meant to mention that and then i got kind of got distracted and i just started doing everything so yeah we got our steps step by step um but i'll just kind of i'm, I'm not gonna like i said i'm not gonna record myself actually doing this i'm gonna stop it in between every step kind of point things out um just gonna take a relaxed um approach to this uh, we got cardboard, we got foam here, and it's it, it's packed in here really nicely. And uh, actually, this is as far as, I, as I've unpacked it before. So I think we need to pull this out just like so. We'll take this foam off and kind of pop this. I don't think there's anything else worth a note in there. Just extra foam uh, wrapped very nicely. We could put this down because everything's kind of protected with this plastic piece that's there. But let us unwrap this in. And there we go. That is our arcade panel that we are going to... Oh, had it the right way, and then I flipped it upside down. But there you go. That is our arcade panel. Got a trackball, which I'm very interested to see how well this uh, is easy to set up. Uh, micro switch buttons and a micro switch D-pad, um, which does feel like it's got an octagonal gate on it. Um, yeah, you can see on the back here that we've got our nice and clear plastic place so you can see like everything in here so that's really cool um that presumably we'll need to connect it up this up this piece here yeah we could pull that out even more if, if we need to and an extra piece of tape we don't really need now but yeah really cool so uh, what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to do the first step which i already kind of already looked at and the first step is going to be um unscrewing the three screws in the front and the five on each side. So 10 altogether, 13 screws um, to get that off. Let me see if I have this on a tripod right now, but let's see if I can move it over and you can see over here. So the front and then the side and then the other side. That's what I'm going to do now. So when we cut back, all that should be off. All right, if I had to pull this out just slightly so I could get the screws on this side, but yeah, I took them out. Uh, really quickly, um, yeah, it took me like less than a minute to get all 13 screws out. But then again, I did use like a like a motorized hand uh, screwdriver or whatever. But I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, these things just kind of want to come off right away as soon as you take the screws off. And I was hoping not to do that, but I did that. So you got this here, a loud bang noise, whatever. But now... We've got uh, the side panels off, but it seems like the next step is just to lift this part out. And I um, said to do it carefully, but I think I could do it one handed. <laughs> and if we flip it over, there's a ribbon cable. That's why I told you to do it quick carefully, but we can just unplug this. Oh, not even pointing at it. Just unplug this. Boom. And now, no, there's something else connected, isn't there? 
Let's see here, we'll get that up there. Just sliding down. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to do this one-handed. Uh, in here, there's the other end of the cable. So you can kind of see that this is the other part at which it's plugged in. We'll squeeze down on that level. It just slid out really nicely. So there you go. That's the whole panel removed. One of them was for the haptics and the other one was presumably for the D-pad. All right, here I've got the panel I've just taken out and here is the, um, I probably shouldn't be having it upside down like that, but I was just really confused for a second here because if you remember, there was a plug that went in here in the old cable and then we had this uh, plug here. Now, obviously on the new one, this plug goes plugged into the same one. This is for the haptics, but instead it's telling me to hook up a USB. And I was like, what USB? I was like, this has this, where am I supposed to plug this in? And it's kind of like just vaguely mentioned in the instructions. So I had to go online to really look up, you know, how to uh, like plug this thing in. And it's like, no, there should be a USB in there. So I'm like looking in here, like, okay, here's like, where is this USB? Everybody's pointing out it's there. It's supposed to be there coming through with this other cable. I'm like, what the hell? And then I, I had to actually go in there and look deeper for whatever reason on mine, it's like buried. It's like it goes off on a tangent, goes way off in the corner. So this has been in the pit, in the machine the whole time. I need to untape that or whatever and use that to plug into that game's, <laughs> I mean, in the, uh, the control panel. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna get all that installed, just kind of pop that back on top and that's we'll, we'll cut back. And oh yeah, I forgot before I, I forget to mention, I, I'm just storing the old one in there. So, uh, so it's just always inside this thing, you know, I don't see any reason why not to. I mean, I'm not gonna be moving this thing around. I mean, I could secure it somehow, but I'm just gonna leave it in there. I don't think it's one big a deal, big deal one way or another. Um, otherwise I'd probably put it someplace and lose it and, and that would suck in case I needed it. All right, here we are. I've got this thing hooked in there. I just kind of wish that that uh, red cable would would have came out just a little bit. The red and black one would have come out a little bit further because I did have to have in this pretty close in order to plug that in. Uh, the USB cable is plenty long though, but uh, yeah, I just thought I'd kind of point that out. That was pretty tight uh, to pull, to get that in there. A uh, little bit more difficult than it should have been, but not really too difficult at all. So there we go, there's that. Let me get the, I, I assume the last step is to put the, uh, the side rails in the front on. So let's just do that now. All right, I got everything installed to set up. This is the camera angle we're gonna see here. Uh, I'm not going to adjust the lighting so much so you can see the screen because then you won't be able to see the control panel. And uh, it's actually many, 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 many hours later than when I first started. Now, it's nothing to do with me installing this. It has something to do with entirely uh, something entirely different that I had completely forgotten about. But um, And I actually worked on some other projects in between there as well. But here we go. And, and honestly, um, to have this control panel here is just is worth it, even if you're not doing anything but navigating the menus because it makes things a whole lot easier than having to use that D-pad and then having to switch to the front panel to hit the buttons. Because now, uh, like if I wanted to play, let's say Big Shot, for example, I just select it and boom, hit A, hit A, bam, I'm in the game. <laughs> it's so much easier than wondering on the front of the panel what buttons I'm supposed to hit. And of course, when I'm playing, when I go ahead and play the game, I don't know if I, yeah, I could just hit the buttons on top, I hit the buttons on the, you know, they're all kind of doing the same things. But as I play this game here, it's not like interfere. None of this stuff is interfering. Uh, but let's uh, get out of here. What I really, really, really wanted this panel for is of course you could do, uh, go to arcade net and boot up one of these games. Let's say I wanted to play Metal Slug. Um, I don't pay for the subscription, so I get to play whatever free stuff is available at the time. So again, I can go to Metal Slug, and, and I don't know how long this is going to take to boot up, but I'll just kind of jump uh, to where this boots up. All right, looks like we got it up. It always takes a, I don't know exactly what it's doing, but this is like streaming off the internet um, through their services or whatever. So sometimes it's choppy, it's just Wi-Fi uh, through this device, but... Again, we can insert credits here. We can, um, I don't know what the button is to start here, but I had it going once before. There we go. So everything, it just works right out of the box. I didn't have to configure anything. Um, this is really choppy. I, I tried this a little bit earlier and it was fine, but 
but yeah, sometimes this is choppy, but yeah, everything works. Uh, metal, metal Slug three button game, all three buttons work. I upgraded my PC recently, and what I did with the other, it's like the first time I actually built a whole uh, PC from scratch. Um, you know, not even using really any parts from the existing one. So I took my existing PC and I hooked it up to this, and I kind of barely, I just got Pinball and Porium working on it. And um, I was like, well, I could use, you know, MAME and stuff on it. So let's switch over to the, um, it's already plugged in. That's what all the cables up there are. They're just plugged into the PC, which I have on below. We're going to select that. We're going to hit the Vibs button. So um, I had Launchbox running. And this is what was taking forever. I forgot I never installed or copied over the Launchbox files. And there's a ton of them. So I got it going. It's actually going to be transferring for quite a while. But I made sure to get the arcade stuff on here. Because, like, let's go with uh, something basic. One of my favorite games here. Let's go with Burger Time. It's a, it's a top day. It's a vertical screen game. So I took the time to actually set up this version of Launchbox. I'd just been copying it from PC to PC. Um, and, and as such, when I finally did get it working, I, certain things needed adjustments like the buttons and everything. So here we go. I got Burger Time. Uh, now... Uh, uh, come on. If this was working properly, you know, it's not working properly. Give me a second. That's what was wrong. Um, <laughs> I've already rebooted it. I, could, I knew something was wrong. I couldn't quite tell. But the second monitor is actually supposed to be used, and it kind of screwed up when I switched it back and forth. So the second monitor actually will show you the marquee of the game on the headbot board or whatever, whatever it can. If there's a flyer, if there's no, I don't have a marquee image for it. So I'm finally putting those marquee images. Uh, <laughs> to use. Um, so yeah, we're getting this booted up here. Yep. And I did have to configure a bunch of buttons, but yeah, credits, start it up. There we go. Everything just works. And well, it doesn't just work, but it's very easy to configure. So obviously, any game that has using the joystick and the buttons will work. But there was some interesting stuff I wanted to try out. Here we go. I'm going to boot up Area 51 because it's a light gun game. And obviously, I can't use a light gun on here. But what was really interesting is as soon as I put, put, uh, booted up the PC and everything, you can see that the mouse works here. See? <laughs> the cursors. I don't know if you can see that based on the, uh, the angle I'm at and the, the, the screen. I haven't adjusted anything. But yeah, when I hooked this up to a PC, uh, it detected the buttons and everything, and it detected this as a mouse. So it was able to move the mouse cursor around the screen. So obviously anything you could hook up to main to use the mouse, or basically any other system to use the mouse, you could use this trackball for too. So all we got to do is insert some credits here, and uh, we can start. And we're off. And uh, we'll do the beginning. Look at that. Oops. Oh, that's because it's the beginning of the game. I can't fire it yet. Stay. I used to play this in arcades all the time. I mean, it's no light gun or anything, but it's certainly better than trying to use a joystick. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot about this. This is a trackball game. It's not the one I was going to show, but I completely forgot about this game. I don't even know if it's set up properly. We'll see. There we go. It is. Oh, wait. It's not. <laughs> it's very sensitive. Oh, oh, okay. I do need to set this one up. Okay, I think I just had it. Yeah, I had the settings all wonky, but yeah, here we go. And There we go. There we go, bowling. I completely had forgot about this game. I used to play this in the arcades every once in a while. I never saw it. Um, what about the hook? Yep, the hook works. Be... Yeah, Sabi. Um, Again, trackball game. Inserting some coins. There we go. Start it up. Working just fine. Oh, it's not working just fine. Hang on a second. All right, there we go. I actually had, had it working, and then I must have messed around with the settings more and screwed it up. <laughs> but yeah. Look, look at that. It working just fine. Trackball working just great on this. It's almost like having a uh, a giant cocktail cabinet of centipede. <laughs> That's what this is like, and it's awesome. All right, let's get Arcanite up and running. And before I forget to mention, I had this set up for, like, uh, virtual pinball stuff. So uh, the screen was orientated, like, regular landscape mode. But I could not get the screen to rotate in a launch box or a big box or anything. So I did have to manually set windows up to, to set this up for portrait. And if I do go back to uh, virtual pinball, something like that, pinball Porium, for example, works and everything. 
uh, now. But if I ever do go back to set that up, I'll have to go back and manually switch it back in Windows. Um, I want. There, I mean, I know I could do it in main, but the front end just won't auto rotate. So, and I think there's some tools to help assist with that. I just have. I just barely got this up and running as it is. So, let's go ahead and uh, there we go. And get this up. Again, this is supposed to be a dial game, but again, I think you know having a trackball, you know maybe if I you know were to finally do it, it would be better than using a uh, joystick for sure. Oop, there we go. <laughs> And there you go. That is the arcade control panel for the At Games Legends Pinball. I know I'm not the first person to do this, not by a long shot. <laughs> I just recently got mine because I I just waited for it to go on sale because I didn't want to pay $200. Uh, $100 for everything that this is, being, this is doing to this is uh, fantastic. I'm really opening up a lot of, uh, of ways to play different games on here without having to rely on getting another controller. And uh, which is fine to do that, getting a joypad and everything, but they have it built into the machine like this. It just makes everything so much easier. Navigating is easier. I can play games like Centipede with the trackball and everything. Um, I'm just really happy with it. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to show off here. Um, again, if I hadn't had done um, all those other At Games Legends Pinballs videos, I probably wouldn't have done this one. But since it was a new addition uh, to the machine, I figured, hey, let's just put out a quick video, even though. It, this thing wound up taking me all day because I'd forgotten to install the thing I wanted to play on it. Anyway, um, that's it. We're going to call it video. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.